I just went on a vegan diet and my cholesterol actually went up. Not down, but up. Does a vegan diet make your cholesterol go up? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, and thanks for sending the videos for me to look at, I'm going to be looking at Nick Norwitz again. Nick is a medical student at Harvard who has his own incredible medical transformation experience and got connected with a self-experimenter some years ago, Dave Feldman, and you're gonna see them kind of doing similar things, doing this self-experimentation and then growing that to other people. In this video, well, yes, he did the one on eating Oreo cookies, made his LDL go down, and now doing vegan cholesterol going up. Let's see what he has to say. Be sure to listen to the end where I give my final thoughts. Before we dive into today's video, I want to invite you to take keto nutritionist Amy Berger's free masterclass, The Secrets to Breaking Keto Fat Loss Stalls. If you're doing all the right things but stubborn weight still won't budge, then Amy's masterclass is for you. See the link in the description to sign up. Now, are you surprised my cholesterol went up on a vegan diet? Are you fully in disbelief? Or, if you're plant-based yourself, are you even a little angry with me? Good. Channel that emotional charge into curiosity, because this wasn't a fluke. It's physiology. And I'm going to show you how I increased my LDL cholesterol on a vegan diet. Like a magician revealing his secrets. And then, I'm going to explain to you why you should care. Now, remember, there's kind of a false choice here. There isn't just, you know, a diet without any animal products, vegan, and a diet without any plant products, carnivore, right? So th there are lots of different types of diets. They all can be healthy. And in fact, there's a lot in common with these diets. If you come from a standard American diet with all sorts of junk and ultra processed food. So you might actually get benefits in your health with either of these approaches because you've cut out all of that damaging and harmful food stuff, if you will. But so now here, I, I think Nick's moment is here. Everyone thinks, believes the vegan diet's better. Everyone believes cholesterol, the lower, the better. So he's gonna kind of blow holes in those things and explain why. But first, let me start by describing my baseline diet, which I ate for one week strictly before going vegan. It featured beef, eggs, fish, cheese, butter, Greek yogurt, and was almost entirely carnivore, except for some extra virgin olive oil and macadamia oil I use as some of my personal favorite added fats. But then I switched and went full vegan keto for the next week and switched my diet to one focusing on tofu with some added vegan protein powder to control for protein between the dietary phases, green vegetables like spinach and Brussels sprouts, some dark chocolate admittedly, and macadamia butter because wouldn't it be a shame to uncouple dark chocolate from nut butter. Yummy. Well, so I wasn't expecting him to be doing a keto vegan, were you? I was expecting that he would go, you know, full on, full carbs, vegan, like most vegans do. So actually what we're seeing is the change within a keto type of metabolism doesn't matter if you're having animal products to, or not. And that's an interesting thing that I, I didn't, I assumed that he would be testing this versus a regular vegan type of diet with higher carbs, but that's not the case. My macro breakdowns were as follows. For the animal-based, mostly carnivore ketogenic diet, I was eating 320 grams of total fat per day with 121 grams of saturated fat per day, nine grams of net carbs with zero fiber and 135 grams of protein. Then for the vegan ketogenic diet, I was eating 158 grams of fat, 29 grams of saturated fat, way, way less than the 121 grams of saturated fat I was eating on my carnivore keto diet, 29 grams of net carbs, 21 grams of fiber, and 135 grams of protein. If you've been watching my videos or if you're new to my channel, I use total carbs and not net carbs. So that would be one editorial thing to, to put on here. Net carbs just means more carbs. Uh, and it's a way for processed food to look less carby because you deduct the 
fiber and sugar alcohols to get the net carbs. So it's going to look lower. But recently I had someone who switched all of his Burger King buns with a keto bun and the diet didn't work because the keto buns were almost as high in carbs, total carbs, as the Burger King or fast food bun. So be careful. Watch total carbs, not net, especially if you're having difficulty. So protein was controlled. Honestly, my stomach got pretty upset on the vegan diet, as I suspected it would given past attempts. That's just me, my biology, my microbiome, whatever. And it's why I didn't do this vegan phase for longer. If you hadn't met Nick before, he fixed, cured his medically serious, life-threatening ulcerative colitis, which is a very serious GI problem. And so he might be particularly sensitive. That's what he was alluding to there. I actually lost 4.2 pounds on my keto vegan diet, driving up my LDL. Wait, what? Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. In fact, we already know from a set of meta-analyses of 41 human randomized control trials published by myself and colleagues, including first author Professor Adrian Sotomota, good friend of mine, that there is an inverse association between LDL cholesterol change and body mass index on low carb diets. In fact, if you do the meta-analyses broken up by BMI categories, only healthy weight lean populations with BMIs less than 25 as a population see increases in LDL. And the leaner the person is, the higher their LDL goes up, all things being equal. Now, to take a relevant tangent, on the individual level, this is quite shocking. For example, I've seen clinical cases where a patient with a BMI of 42 in the severe obesity range and an LDL around 80 went keto, and their LDL remained around 80 as they lost weight until they got into the lean healthy range for BMI, and in this case around BMI of 25, their LDL shot up. <laughs> Boom! It went from the 80 to the 200s when they hit that healthy range, healthy BMI range, despite a similar diet. They didn't really change their diet, but as soon as they got into the healthy lean range, their LDL just shot through the roof. Isn't that interesting? Well, and this is one reason why I don't recommend checking the cholesterol levels, the lipid profile, if you will, while you're losing weight. So you want to wait, W-A-I-T, he's into the puns, you know, you want to wait, or double entendres, wait until you get to the goal and then recheck pretty common in my clinic. Other doctors want to check the cholesterol level and they're kind of gunning to show that it went up, therefore the diet's bad, which it's more complicated than that. But while you're losing the weight, don't check the cholesterol until you're back where the your baseline or your goal is. Of course, we look at triglyceride and HDL as being more important than the total and LDL, just a different way to look at the blood. But that's an important point that he was in a weight loss mode while he was doing the vegan keto diet. So I want to return to my challenge to you at the beginning of the video to check your emotions. Are you still surprised? Are you excited? Are you angry? Are you confused? All emotions are valid, but not all are adaptive for you. So I suggest you lean into the curiosity. You can feel free to take or leave this advice, but that's what I suggest. Now, I also said I'd explain why you should care, irrespective of if you're carnivore or vegan or anything in between. It's because what I, what we are doing here with N equals one science represents a democratization of science. With more tools available to me and you and more information and community resources available, I believe, I truly believe we can all take charge of our metabolic health and fully and deeply immerse in our own lifelong individual N equals one metabolic health journeys. Doesn't that sound fantastic? It's not about eating tons of eggs or Oreos or going carnivore or vegan. Frankly, I don't care what you eat. I just want you to feel empowered because your health is in your hands. And with that, I actually want to give a quick plug to SciFox. From the Oreo versus statin study to the 720 eggs to 600 strips of bacon, I do a lot of self-experiments, which also means I get a lot of labs. And going forward, I'm going to be utilizing SciFox as my N equals one support. And I want to offer you my discount code, Nick15, because this is a really great an easy platform where you can get loads of data from easy to use at home mail-in kits that are way cheaper than standardized lab tests. 
This is the democratization of science. It's putting your data in your hands. And if you want more details on checking out that platform, it's really great. Just check the links in the video description. But returning to my main point, you can live every day curious about how your lifestyle impacts your metabolism and how it impacts your physical and mental health. And when you unlock the pleasure in that metabolic health journey, well, truly, I think that's the secret to health. Not any superfood or supplement, just everlasting metabolic curiosity. Your data in your hands, your empowerment. That's why we do these N equals one experiments, to inspire you, to inspire us, to start a dialogue about N equals one science, citizen science, and to demonstrate that the scientific process, especially with respect to metabolic health, is something we all can engage in for our individual and community benefits. Well, I think he's onto something, and I love the term democratization of your metabolic health, although there are a few nuances there I'm sure he knows about. We can't always use the lab results under low-carb circumstances as it's interpreted under high carb circumstances, you, you wouldn't expect a keto level to be high if someone's eating carbs. So it's flagged as abnormal if you don't eat carbs and you have a higher keto ketone level. So with some help in interpreting the information, I think the idea that you could get a handle on your own health is fantastic. Of course, I'm not quite so needy for the information. I, I'm remembering the days when actually in, in gliders today or other airplanes, you can fly without altimeters, without knowing the actual altitude. So you can go a long way without all of this kind of biohacking, but it certainly is something that can be helpful, especially if you're not sure about it, right? I just want to make uh, also an announcement or a shout out to the Citizen Science Foundation. They're having a meeting in Las Vegas again in February of 2025 to fundraise for doing more self-experimentation and other clinical trials, including continuing the one on the lean mass hyper responders. If, if you've heard me speak about it again, if you've heard me speak about it before, that's the study of high, super high LDLs in people on low carb diets and they're looking at the arteries themselves to see if there are any changes. So check out the Citizen Science Foundation and watch out for Nick Norwitz as he continues to progress. I, I, I think it's great. If you're like, please like, subscribe and ring the notification bell and look for new content on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.